Good morning, I am uh, Joël Tillman from the University of Mons in, in Belgium where I am leading the motion capture uh, research group and today I will be talking about the problem of evaluation and uh, visualization when considering uh, motion data and machine learning. <clears throat> um, so first of all, let's begin with a very brief consideration about motion data. Well, it's complicated. Um, the mock-up data has a lot of dimension and as humans we are experts in understanding motion when it's presented to us in its uh, original form but it's much more complicated to make sense of raw three-dimensional motion capture data so if you just see numbers uh, moving around with the x, y, z position of a point in space we cannot make sense of it but if we see it in, a, in the original way which is like a skeleton moving then it's much more easy to, to, to make sense of what we, what we see and what we have in our um, however, interest in mockup is increasing with the evolution of technologies, making motion capture system more reliable, uh, easier to use, and also also cheaper. Um, there are so many application fields, from biomedical application to entertainment, uh, health, serious games, learning application, performance analysis, and understanding, performing arts, and and so on. And in all these domains, machine learning is a very powerful tool to develop new applications, uh, whether it is used for dimension reduction, um, gesture recognition, gesture evaluation, motion analysis, gesture mapping to other modalities such as uh, sound or such as visual or even gesture to gesture mapping, um, gesture synthesis, and so on. So, however, given the high dimensionality of the data, as well as the high variable, variability found in the motion data, which in some cases can be very interesting to use, but in, in other cases we just want to get rid of that variability. Um, there is a strong need to not to use machine learning as a magic black box, but to have tools that enable the user to interactively tune um, the model uh, for, for his or her purposes. So um, this is the, the, the generic uh, framework for motion capture, so you have some motion capture data, then you have to pre-process it in some way, dimension reduction and so on. Then you annotate the data, with this annotated data you are able to train a model, and then for your actual application, again you have uh, motion capture data that you have to pre-process. And then you are able to do the decoding, mapping, recognition, uh, synthesis, synthesis, depending on, on, on the model you've trained and your application, and then you can observe the results. Um, interactive machine learning, such as proposed by uh, Friedbrink et al. with the Wikinator, is an approach for uh, low dimension input data, which closely ties together the annotation to observation uh, C path with incremental data, and that enables you to bring the user in the loop. However, we believe that tackling higher dimension motion data in a similar interactive way requires um, two two important updates to this, to this graph. Firstly, the problem of high-level feature extraction and selection, dimension reduction and distance metrics selection must be addressed. So machine learning could theoretically, theoretically do this automatically. However, um, if you want to, to, to have the machine learning that, that trains the model for recognition and so on, but also to do the dimension reduction inside the model, you need enough data, and usually for this kind of uh, application we don't have a huge database it's because it's costly and it takes time to record the, the data. So um, we believe that the user should be brought in the loop at this stage with his or her priori knowledge related to the application at, at hand, and um, that there is a need for a tool that enables the user to do this uh, easily and interactively. Secondly, um, <clears throat> there is a need for presenting the outputs uh, and even the inside of the trained models themselves in interactive in, in an innovative way to, for the user to understand how uh, changing the feature he selected or how changing the parameters of the model affect this, the, the model or affect the, the output of this, uh, of this whole system. So um, this is why we develop Motion Machine, which is an open source prototyping environment based on motion feature extraction and motion analysis, 
analysis and uh, for motion analysis and interaction design. Um, <coughs> it, is, uh, it is a framework uh, which is uh, independent to the skeletal model motion data that you input, so it can be used for full skeleton with the high end optical motion capture or coming from SkinX sensor. It can be used for uh, hand skeleton tracking with the lead motion and so on. Um, it, it, involved, uh, uh, it, it contains a repository of motion feature extraction techniques and distance metric. At the moment there are uh, some, some 20 of them, but we're working on, on adding more. And since it's open source, uh, other people can add them to their, their own features too. Um, it enables interactive 2D and 3D scene viewers, which enables you to truly relate your, your 2D two-dimensional data with the actual pose of the skeleton at the time. And it has an integrated, integrated annotation layer. So for those who are interested, here is the website, which is still a work in progress, but we are working on adding a tutorial video and so on for anyone to, to be able to use it easily. So um, our goal with this framework is to make it very easy to configure different applications around high dimensional motion data with adapted visualization in each case. Uh, so here. So here you have uh, an instrument where, which was uh, where, where the sound is uh, is controlled with different uh, parameters from the from the hand, and so you could visual visualize these parameters and choose them uh, to to link them with the sound. Then here you have a feature explorer where you can actually see ver uh, various kind of uh, features, high level feature extracted from the motion, and by moving the mouse on this two dimensional uh, timeline. You could see the skeleton moving accordingly, so you could see exactly how each feature relates to the to the motion. And it was actually linked also with some of the inputs from, came from the Wakinator. So we did the integration with the Wakinator thanks to Tony from uh, the Goldsmith, Goldsmith team in the workshop we had a few months ago. And uh, the third one is a way of um, being able to extract the, to extract the most discriminant motion features in the motion database containing different group factors. So I go very fast uh, for, for this, but I have uh, videos and, and so if some people are interested in one of these applications, just come to me and I'll be more than happy to give more details. Um, <clears throat> so this is how we see the use of, of motion machine. Uh, the user can hack through a series of motion features extractors, distance metrics and machine learning interfaces using creative coding practices. So the framework is based on open framework for those who, who know it. So Using it, you can easily design your own interface. And then, uh, in that interface you've just built, you can observe, annotate, and manipulate motion capture data and the extraction or decoding results through an intuitive 2D, 3D interactive environment. So, of course, if you want to be able to do the first part, you need to have some level of expertise with a computer uh, science, even though uh, open framework is it's a, it's a high level um, language and framework, so, so um, it's quite easy to, easy to do. But you can also, with this, once the, once the interface is built, you can give that interface to anyone and he or she will not, be, will, will not need to, to implement anything in code. It, you can just use the, the interface to, to see how the model or how the features influence the model. So I will now present, present very briefly two use cases in which we, we used uh, this uh, framework for, uh, for machine learning application. Um, the first one comes from a project that aims at taking motion capture data from an actor and, oops, and apply it to a virtual character uh, with a different morphology and different st stylistic characteristics. So <clears throat> um, this is how it's usually done in uh, animation application. So you have some data that come from an actor, so this is motion capture data. And then you apply it to your virtual character um, using standard uh, uh, frameworks. But, but usually since this character has a uh, different morphology, you will have some problems like the hand come uh, inside the head or uh, the style that you want to convey is not the one that that, you, that you're supposed to have with the character because he's supposed to be heavy, so he would, would not um, behave in the same way as your actor originally did. So <clears throat> you will have 
a professional animator that will uh, by hand modify the result to give the proper look to your final animation. It means taking into account the, the constraints, like the physical constraint, but also changing the style of the motion for it to fit the like the psychology of it, the virtual character as they as they see it. And um, our goal is to use machine learning uh, techniques to speed it up. So we have a database of, of uh, actor, motion capture actor data, and then you have a database of corresponding motion which have been uh, modified by the professional animator. And then <clears throat> you try to uh, train a model that will uh, do that directly. So uh, once you have trained your model, you hope that you can input new actor data and directly have the proper style for your, for your uh, virtual character. Um, <clears throat> so there is a need to present the output results to the user in a way that makes it easy to evaluate the quality of, of your result and see how different model parameters influence the, the results. And here is a video that illustrates uh, well, the application that was developed for that, for that purpose. So here, what, we, what you see is in green, the actor data, in red, the, the data, the target data that was um, modified by the professional animator, and in blue, the synthesized data, so the, the output of the model. And um, you can change, you can change the, the distance between those different characters. You can ch uh, choose to see different sequences to see how your model applied to different uh, kind of uh, gestures. And since our goal is to compare the synthesized data to the target data, you can just with the slider change the distance between the two to see them, them super important and see exactly what the, the difference and the distance is. To summarize the, the information, which is, well, of course, temporal visually, we can uh, represent each, sequ each sequence with uh, selected keyframes. So you, it takes snapshots at different times of the motion. And so you can compare uh, um, all the motion with, with several uh, poses of the character. And here, the synthesized algorithm is a, a, a restricted restricted box map machine. And by changing here some of the parameters, you can change the number of hidden units you can change um, if you take into account the past or not. You can take into account how you can take into account how many of the previous uh, iteration you take into account to produce the current result, and you can see how all of this uh, influences your your output results. So the second application uh, is for a different problem. Here, our goal is to perform just a recognition and evaluation uh, using hidden Markov model. And it's okay. So this is a, a traditional land from the Walloon region, and on the on the top you can see that you can choose between uh, different HMM models with different number of states from three to fifteen. Here is the ground truth, so the annotation of the of the data. By the, by the expert, and then you can uh, choose each model and see in purple the, the automatic annotation of the data by the, by the model, and in blue the different states of the model. So you can see when you add more states, if they, if they make sense or not. Uh, actually, in here we were also interested not all, only on having the best accuracy in the matching between the, the, uh, the ground truth and what was uh, output from, the, from the, the models, but also to know if each one of the states was actually representing an interesting part of the motion to give active feedback, because this was to be used for evaluation, so for a, um, for a serious game where people would learn to do that dance, and we wanted to be able not only to give them back a score, but also to tell them, okay, your problem is in that, uh, I don't know, like third state where you don't do that um, so since we don't have 
questions for the presenter. I will ask some of the questions to you. Um, so what I would be interested to discuss is um, what is the importance of interactive, interactive feature selection in uh, human-centered machine learning? Um, and how important is it to present the output of the models in innovative ways to the end user? And how could that influence their perception of the machine learning algorithm or the use of it? Um, and, well, yeah, could you see a need for such a tool in other applications? 